So what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel once again. You know I appreciate having you here. Stick around for today's video. We are back on that first impressions review tip and we're down with this. We are on the brand new for 2021. This is the all new Honda Forza 750. Now I'm going to start this video off slightly different. I've been impressed. I've been on this bike for about 10-15 minutes. I wasn't going to come down this route, but there's a nice little road down here. And I want to kind of put this through its paces on a little country back lane. Now, I didn't plan on doing this, but I've been that impressed so far. We're going to have a little bit of fun before I get even into the video. So join me in this road for a little bit of fun. We have it in sport mode. It's got a few different modes. We will go through that in a bit. But let's have a little bit of a play first. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. As I said, this was not the plan. But just coming up here, I've been quietly impressed. So uh, let's see if uh, it can elevate itself to glory. Remember, we're on brand new tyres. I don't know how many miles the bike's done. 10, something like that, 11 miles. <laughs> so uh, we're not going to go Banzai, but we are going to have a little bit of fun. And remember, this is supposedly a scooter. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I do like the fact that the brakes are on handlebars rear and front so you can use that little bit of back just to bring it in line. Let's dispatch of this car. Let's go. picks up quite quick in sport mode I'm not gonna lie quicker than this X5 does that's for sure again 24 miles an hour on a 60 mile an hour road the car's too big mate don't bother driving it back in the game as I was saying yeah you can use the rear brake on the handlebar just to bring it back in line and the beauty of that is you can let your legs do all the what's the word leverage to get it around the bends as I said before, we haven't started this review, but remember, this is a scooter. <laughs> it does not feel like one, I can tell you that now. <laughs> oh dear, another one. Oh dear. Woo! Anyway, we got a... <laughs> I enjoyed that, I'm laughing. Who would have thought you'd be laughing on a scooter? Now, I'm going to get this out of the way now, again, before we get into the video. And uh, though we're in the video, you can see that we are in the video. <laughs> You're not idiots. But I just want to get it out of the way that I do like scooters. And I do like the DCT gearbox. I have an Africa Twin with the DCT gearbox. So I'm a little bit of a fan of that. And uh, I've had scooters in the past. The last big Honda scooter I owned was a Silverwing 600. And let me tell you this. I did like that bike. I loved it. But it hasn't got anything on this nothing so far this i would say and i'm going to drop a bombshell early here is not like a scooter it's more like a tourer and maybe even a small sports tourer there we go i'll put it out there right so while we're stuck here and on the way up to the petrol station to put some juicage in i'll tell you a little bit about myself I am 18 stone, 6 foot 2, long in the leg. And I only tell you that just so you know how I get on with the ergonomics. Stuff like that, like reach to the bars, footboards, how my feet reach the ground, blah, blah, blah. You know the score. Uh, 18 stone, again, so you can judge it, how I feel the suspension handles with me on it. If you are different, you're going to have to go out and test ride these bikes yourself. A lot of people don't say it. This is only an impression from myself from my body shape, from my experience. If you do like a bike and you do want to check it out for yourself, go and ride one. What I like, you may not. And what you like, I may not. That's just the way it goes. If they made one bike for everyone, wouldn't life be dull? And once again, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Coulston. Go and check them out. I shall leave a link to their website down below. They've got a new showroom and it is pretty swish. I've got to say the new Doble's showroom room is phenomenal i love it when we do the walk round, i should drop all the information over the screen of uh, what the statistics what the statistics that's not a thing is it what the specifications are for this bike 
It's been a long time, you know, you'll have to leave me alone. It's been a while. It's been probably nearly a year since I've done a, a proper, proper first impressions review. So bear with me. What I'm going to do is I'm in Dorking at the moment. I'm going to do kind of an A25 loop through Guildford and then round some of the faster A road, uh, some little country lanes. And somewhere on this trip, we're also going to stop and have a little look round for you guys. We're going to go over the bike, have a little look more in depth of some of the details on the bike, some of the things I like. And as I said, drop some specifications over the top. Also, there will be specifications downstairs in the descriptions box, and that'll be straight from Honda. So all the true, legit stuff. Not me just making it up, you know. <laughs> this is a professional outfit, and I'll attempt to go through the TFT dashboard because I haven't had a, a play with it yet. Although I've got an Africa Twin with one. Oh, look at that. Perfect commuter. As I said, although I've got an Africa Twin, this one is different, so we're going to have to have a little bit of a play with it on the fly. We go through it together, like good friends. Right, so first impressions of the comfort while we're around town and we're just poodling along is it's very, very nice. The seat to bar to pegs ratio is quite nice. And the reason for that is it's a very, very nice plush seat very comfortable and what they seem to have done this time is they put the hump slightly further back it's not perfect for me but it's a lot better than it was by making the floorboards a lot more roomy and versatile for example i can now put my feet really far forward i don't know if you can see that but my feet are really far forward and i'm tucked right back into that hump and for cruising that's really nice when you want to hustle you've got a midpoint where you can put your feet in the middle, hence it's called a midpoint. I made that up. Honda don't call it a midpoint. They might do. I don't know. I did. And uh, then you can shove them right far back, almost sports bike like, like tucked up heels under your booty. And that's when you can just push down and hustle this thing. It's got a long wheelbase, so it's slow turning in the sense it's not razor sharp. But this is a bloody scooter. And when you hustle it with your feet back there, do you know what? I like it. I don't know how we suddenly come on to handling. I was doing comfort. Let's get back to the comfort, dear boy. Stop getting distracted. Stop going off on a tangent. Right, as I said. <laughs> oh dear, I'm just happy to be out. You can tell. I'm not insane, you know. Well, borderline. Right, so, the bars. Beautiful. They're like a flat bar, like a drag bar. They're a nice width apart for me. Very comfortable. My hands are not too high, they're not too low. Kind of nice for my size. I'm really enjoying the comfort of this bike. You might be able to tell. And the fact that I can move my legs around is just an added bonus. It's beautiful. This seat is so, what's the word? Sumptuous. That's the word we're going for today. So while we're dealing with the comfort, you might as well get into the, the airflow side of things. And uh, it's pretty good. I could do with this screen just a touch higher. What I would do is just put one of those extensions on and that's done. The only downside to this screen is, as far as I can see, it's non-adjustable. And that's a little bit of an overview by Honda. It would be much better if it was adjustable, especially if it's electronic. The wind hits just above the visor on me. And as I said before, I'm six foot two, so I'm quite tall. While we've stopped, the seat is a little bit wide. I can imagine if you're shorter in the leg, I'm not saying you're going to have a problem, you'd have to sit on one and judge for yourselves, but if you put your, your feet back a bit behind the footballs, it's a lot slimmer, but the seat's a bit wider, so it splays your legs out slightly more. For me, I absolutely love it. I don't like having really bent legs, so I've got the option of putting my legs flat down and quite straight. But as I said, if you are shorter in a leg, I would suggest going to try a bike like this. Ask me in the comment section, what's it like if I've got a leg that's three and a half inches long? I couldn't tell you. Well, I could. Yeah, it's too big for you. But you know what I mean? It's pointless, my opinion, on that scenario. Go and try one for yourself. But it has got the cutouts at the back, so you can get your feet down if you're slightly shorter, but it's in a slightly more unnatural position. I've got the visor open, which I rarely do on any bike. The only bike I actually have this visor open on is my Africa Twin, which has the large screen and an extension on. So that goes to show that the air bubble here is quite nice with just a tiny bit of turbulence around the top of the crash helmet. I can feel a tiny bit on the outside of my shoulders, but not buffeting, I can just feel air. It is pretty still here. It's very, very nice indeed. If you watch these videos or you've met me in person, I'm a big lump. 
So for me to get in the wind bubble is quite an achievement. And my legs, they're completely wind free too. All in all, the comfort and the bubble here that we're in is really nice. So I'm very impressed, very impressed with this so far. Let's get on with the handling. As you saw in that little opening clip, it handles better than it should. You actually forget that you're riding a scooter. That's how good this is. This isn't like scooters of old, like big maxi scooters. In your mind, you're thinking maxi scooter. And I've got no problem with you thinking that. I did before I got on it. I thought, oh, that's a maxi scooter. And there's nothing wrong with them. I love them. I've had one and I would definitely have another one. But when you get on and ride this, the way the engine's configured with the swing arm, chain drive, size of the wheels, and the wheelbase, the chassis so to speak, it feels more like a motorcycle than it does a scooter. And I think that is a stroke of genius. Think of this as a big automatic, I'm going to say the word sport, but I use that term loosely because it's a 750 engine based on the NC750 Integra XADV. So I'm going to use that term loosely. Sport, it depends on your definition of sport. Anyway, back to the point. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a mini sport tourer. It just sits here nicely. It's got quite a long wheelbase. So on roads like this, when you're just plodding along and you're on straighter roads, it's very, very stable. We shall check out the higher speed a little bit later on the motorway. Fingers crossed if we've got time. If not, I shall do a private run somewhere and let you know. But I'm guessing this will be pretty planted up at those 70, 80 miles an hour kind of speeds. But on an A road like this, just through the sweepies, although we're following a bus, which doesn't help. I need to get past that. Hopefully it will turn off soon. And also it carries its weight quite low down. It feels like it's a low down weight bearing kind of bike, if that makes any bloody sense whatsoever. And by that, I mean at slow speeds and almost walking pace, it's very neutral handling. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall over, tip over. It doesn't feel heavy at all. It's not one of those bikes that you get on and you feel instantly, oh my god, this is too heavy. And when you're on the move, like most bikes, the weight doesn't disappear, but it shows up in all the right places. I mean, we're just poodling along here, and it doesn't feel like we're going too slow for the bike. Like, I've been on big tourers when you get to speeds like this, and it just feels like it wants to fall into the corner, whereas this is very neutral. They have hit the nail on the head again with what they're bloody good at, and that is making a bike that is out of the box easy to ride. Now, I said this in many videos, easy does not mean bland. Easy just means the science is right. There we go. Absolutely no turbulence on the lid at 70 miles an hour. Sure-footed, planted. I can feel a little bit of air on my left elbow. That's it. There is absolutely no buffeting. None. Zero. Nada. You can feel it's slower in the turning. You can feel it's got a longer wheelbase. I'm not going to deny that. But you've got to get it in your head what it is. Once you get it in your head what it is, and you know it's going to turn slower than something that's razor sharp, you can compensate for it. You can take the wider lines. You can turn in at the right moments. The Forza 750, the new Honda 750, use the term loosely, scooter. And I like the look of it. This is replacing the Integra. Excuse the dirt on it down here. That's my fault. If you look at my shoes, I went off-roading yesterday and this is the only gear I've got left that's not dirty, although now it is dirty. That's another video altogether, off-roading on my Super Cub. But today, we are doing this. We are looking around this, the Forza 750. What do you think? Leave a comment downstairs in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Do you prefer this to the Integra? I've never ridden an Integra, and if it rides half as good as this, that was a good bike. But this looks much better than the Integra. In my opinion, if you've already got one, I do apologise. <laughs> but this is a really, really nice bike. So let's have a little bit of a walk round, and I shall go through some of the stuff with you. Right, let's start as normal at the front and then do whatever we do from there. Let's go. On the front, we have a 17-inch wheel. That's right. Have I done the usual? Yes, I have. I've hidden the actual size. But it's a 17, I would say 120. 70? We'll guess at that. 
I'll put it on the screen anyway so you know and uh, we've also got twin discs on this one ABS front and I'm having a little look now rear with Nissan calipers and upside down forks so that says where they're going with this the pedigree of this this is no average scooter my friends this is the big league look at it it's really really nice I'm loving this you can tell can't you you've got the indicators integrated in there and the LED lights up there I shall go through those in a minute I'll turn them on and let you have a little look even though you had a sneak preview once again excuse the dirt on the side that's my fault that's the clay from my trousers it will come off but it does need a little bit of water right so the footballs you can put your feet up here completely forward and then as I said before this is kind of the mid mount part and then you can put your feet all the way back here and use these kind of like sports pegs. You've got one, two, three ways of riding this. And that is fantastic. Very, very versatile. You've also got these little vents here, which I'm assuming, along with aerodynamics, will get some of the heat up from the engine. Maybe. I don't know. And then uh, push it onto your legs to keep it nice and warm. So if you are one of those people that like to ride around with a granny blanket on your legs, uh, that'll help you out no end. Right, so in there is the engine, which is uh, the same as the NC750s. The XADV is the 750 parallel twin paired with the dual clutch transmission the dct and it works fantastic on here as i've said before i am a, a massive fan of the dct i've got an africa twin with one so i would be the exhaust on this looks pretty similar to the xadv and uh, under there you've got a center stand i've got it on a side stand at the moment so you've got a center stand and a side stand on the rear you've got a nissan caliper and a single disc abs and the back tire is a 160 60 15 so slightly smaller and if you're wondering what that is down there that's a handbrake so if i come up here quickly i'm going to go through the bars in a minute but this is your handbrake so you just put that on like so and that's held in place i mean you should really do it all the time and the reason for that is it's a dct so it's in neutral when you stop it so Whereas you can put it in gear if you're on a normal bike, with a DCT you can't put it in gear, so to save it rolling away, you put that on. Right, round the back, it's uh, it's nice, uh, it's not a lot I can say really, <laughs> it's the back isn't it? Round this side, you've got uh, this side, it is chain driven as I said on the way up here, you've got rear pillion pegs here, which are nice, they're quite large actually, they're not like the XADV, the XADV are got nicer ones than these I'd have to say they've got platforms whereas these I don't know where it's to save weight but they're on there that's the football this side and uh, the seat as I said as soon as we're talking about the comfort here I haven't obviously been a pillion on this but if it's anything as comfortable as that front seat there then yeah it is pretty nice what do you think of the colour I've seen it in this in the showroom they had it in black this I don't know what they call this. Jeans blue? I don't know. I haven't got a clue. I just made that up. <laughs> Jury's out for me on this paint scheme. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment downstairs in the comment section. Do you like this colour? Or what colour would you like to see it in? Right, so here we go on the front. Full LEDs. Both headlights come on at once, which I am a fan of. I don't like the single light coming on. The other one used as a full beam. This one has the indicators integrated into the bodywork and they're full LEDs as well. It does look nice from the front. I'm getting a little bit carried away here, but it does look nice. It's got a lot of uh, frontage, let's say. <laughs> People say I make this stuff up, but I don't. I do, but <laughs> there we go. On the back, it's uh, pretty much, it looks like the NC750 from the back, to be honest. It's got the LED tail light, that's full LED, and the LED indicators that are quite standard across the Honda range. I've got them on my Sierra 250 and my Africa Twin, and they're on a lot of other bikes as well in the Honda range. All right, so before we go through the dash, let me just find it. All right, so here are the keys. As you can see, <laughs> I've said that and I start laughing because this is the keyless bit. This is a key. Don't know what this is for. There's no actual keys on this bike or slots for this to go in. So I will assume that this is for some kind of luggage to go on the bike so you could use that, the Honda key. I don't know. If you do know, drop a comment down in the comment section. But as we shoot this video, I'm not quite sure. But this is a keyless bit. And up here, it's just a push button and this twisty thing here. But before we get onto that, Let's do these two little buttons here. That one's fuel, which is down there. That opens that, and this comes off completely. It's not on a hinge, it comes off. Some people like them, some people don't. And then the seat, 
you just push this one and then if I give that a little tap there we go it's on hydraulics and that's the space under the seat with the tool kit in it is quite deep you can get one full face crash helmet in there I would assume that it's designed for that and a few other bits or if you don't want to put your crash helmet in there it is quite handy actually it's not the biggest space under the seat on a scooter but remember treat this like a bike and that is an advantage over this side you've got this little cubby hole here which is not lockable so don't leave anything valuable in there so it is uh, let's put my hand in there so it's the size of my hand not that it means anything on screen but where can I get some reference to there we go let's do it on the mirror so it's about that I have got little hands I haven't got big bunch of banana hands so it's a smallish space quite handy but a bit flat and there's no lip there so I don't know what you're going to put in there. Maybe some rags, woolly hat, that sort of thing. But nothing to slide backwards and forwards. But then you can put all that under there, so not a problem. Right, handlebars wise, this side, this is your rear brake. This is not a clutch. As I said, it's a DCT gearbox. You've got all your light controls up here. That's your full beams and your push to pass. Here you've got your modes. We'll go into that in a minute. You've got your function button and your computer joystick. You've got your hooter here. Uh, your indicators and your hazard lights now these buttons here there's one there and there's one under there these are your plus and minus these are for when you ride manually in the dct gearbox when you put it in manual these are the flappy pedals you use i'm not sure i like the positioning of these you'd have to get used to them but i think they're slightly different to my africa twin i think that's the only problem i've got used to mine and these will take me oh, at least 10 minutes to get used to i haven't used them yet i might try them out later but I would say 99% of people will probably never touch those. Over this side you've got your handbrake, as I've said. And to get that off, you just do that. Oh, you see it went back a little bit then, because I'm on a slope. So to put it on, you just do that, and your bike stays nice and put. Front brake, throttle, you've got your start here. And then under here you've got your modes, which is neutral, drive mode. This button here switches it between manual and automatic, pretty straightforward. Up the front, the mirrors are out here. And I have to say, these are a little bit of a pain to adjust, unless you're really tall. I have to stretch right out like this to adjust them. So when you're on the go, you can't really do it. You have to be stationary to do them. So that's the only downside. They are very good, but not easy to adjust. But if you want to change that, I've noticed these on top. There's one there and there's one there. So you can actually get mirrors and put them on here if you want to. If you want your mirrors on the handlebars, you can uh, put some on here and then probably get rid of those altogether, like that. It'll probably look ugly, but <laughs> if you want to get rid of them, you can, basically, and then use them on the handlebars. Right, let's fire her up. So you just hold this down. So there you go, a nice TFT screen. I do like this one, and it's kind of got this, I don't know what you call it, the grey looks like steel it's not steel because it's computerized but you know what I mean and over here this is where these buttons come in your mode your function and your joystick here I will play around with these but I'm gonna film the screen All right up here you've got indicators there and there we work down this side neutral trash control light you've got a, another light under there with a, something through it I'm not sure what that is you got an ABS light here over this side you've got your indicators again you've got your engine management that's your keyless that's your lock i think your immobilizer and another couple of buttons down here not 100 percent sure what these two little lights are for down here here it tells you your side stands down you've got a clock here and you've got your outside temperature here you've got a rev counter here and this is your information here with your fuel gauge down here and then you've got your power things here you've got power engine braking d i'm not sure what the d is uh, drop a line downstairs if i haven't found out before i put this video up and put it on the screen leave a comment downstairs let me know what that means i i don't know i'm, I'm baffled by the d and you've got t which i'm assuming is trash control down here is your gear indicator up here is telling me your parking brakes on and i'm in standard mode you've got four modes you've got standard sport rain and user user obviously you can customize how you want let's use the mode button and then you'll see the standard change at the top so standard rain user sport i'm going to keep it in sport that seems to be the best one for me i'm not showing off i just think the engine's more lively in sport and the gear changes are better right down the bottom you've got total mileage instant consumption average consumption and then date if i press the to the right the joystick then you've got trip a 
you've got trip A consumption, trip A average, and then it goes to a nice little thoughts of thing on the right. And then number three, trip B is the same and a different kind of Forza in different font. And then you've got number four, which is fuel consumption, average consumption, reserve trip, and uh, reserve fuel consumption. If you go here, you can go up, down, left, and right. Now, the left and right changes that. The mode button obviously changes the sport bit at the top, but I can't figure out what the up and down does doesn't seem to do anything. I'd have to look at the manual for that, which I don't have on me, but again, if you know, leave it in the comment section downstairs because it might help someone out. It obviously does something, I just haven't found it out yet, but with these TFT screens, people get scared and think, oh no, there's too much going on, but they're pretty easy. Once you get one with a TFT screen and then get into it, it takes a couple of days and you set it up how you want it, and you probably only ever use two settings to be honest. I do on the Africa Twin, I've got one for off-road and one for road and that's about it. Right, to turn the dash off and to turn the bike off, you just do that, hold it and then it goes off and then we're done. So there she is in all her glory. If I've forgotten to mention anything, again, drop it down in the comments section and I'll try and find out for you and let you know. This is a first impression, this is the first time I've actually seen this bike in the flesh today. It's the first time I've actually got on and ridden it. As I said, I've never ridden the Integra, so uh, it'd be interesting to see from Integra owners what they think of this. I like it. I really do like it. But what we should do now is get back on and ride it some more. I've got about a 10 mile route left back to the shop and basically enjoy ourselves. And then at the end of that, I'm going to give you my conclusion, as in, would I have one in my garage? Anyway, let's get on and ride some more of this, the beautiful Forza 750. All right, so that's enough car park shenanigans. Let's get on with the ride. That's what we're all here for. Well, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I don't know what you're here for. Obviously, you're here to see the new Forza 750. As I've said many times on these videos, I'm just an average guy that likes to ride bikes. So the walk round, yeah, I like showing you guys. But for me, the main part of doing this is I get to ride new stuff. And uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush and say I don't. <laughs> I do. I love it. Right, handbrake off. There we go. We are starting up. Just need to hit the start button. And then press this one down here for drive. And there we go. We're in standard gear one. What I'm going to do is press mode. And then we're over in sport. Now let's go and do a little bit more riding. I'm quite enjoying this. And the sun's come out to join us. The sun is shining down on us, people. The mood I'm in now and the way I'm riding this bike, as it's supposed to be ridden, I like the fact that the back brakes up here. So my legs are kind of redundant. They don't have anything to do. I could take them off, leave them at home. Oh no, I couldn't because eventually I need to stop and then I'd fall over. Scrub that. I can't take them off, but you know what I mean. You could just relax, chill out, work out where you want to put your feet. Do you want to put one forward? Do you want to put one back? Do you want to do it the other way? Do you want to put both back? Do you want to just do that? You can do anything you want. You don't have to worry about it. And you can just have full braking at your fingertips. Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. And let's face it, some people are not confident using a rear brake on a motorcycle. So this sort of thing is perfect for you. If you haven't got that confidence where you can just keep one foot up, you do like to dangle both legs, which some people do, uh, then yeah, get a DCT. It's fantastic. And when you put it on something like this, I would say almost perfection. Almost. There's something missing and I don't know what it is. Well, I do know what it is. You don't get the high-end rush on this bike you don't but you get everything else sometimes bikes surprise you this one has right through traffic like this just poodling along it's very well balanced very very nice indeed right let's uh, stick her in standard which i believe on every other dct bike is just drive so we stick it in standard and what i'm expecting from standard is kind of the economic mode so it short shifts up pretty quickly and that's kind of what the modes do they give you a little bit of variety because it's throttled by wire you can have the modes now in standard mode as i said what it will do is it will short shift up and it will uh, reduce the power slightly slightly less engine braking basically a little less aggressive for everyday riding and round town that is fine 
if you want to go a little bit faster you stick it in sport and what that does is sharpen up the gear changes hangs onto the gears a little bit longer i think the engine brake is a little bit stronger it just peps it up and makes it all round a little bit more snappy then you've got rain mode and what rain mode does is i would assume just dull the power off the back end up the traction control it'll be quite handy in london because of all the diesel that's spilt around so that's when it'll come into its own but we're now in fifth gear 40 miles an hour standard modes doesn't feel chuggy we're sitting just over 2,000 revs and it's a lovely place to be and if you're changing the mode on the fly you've got to back off the throttle you can do it while you're going along you just roll off the throttle press mode and then you can change it if you are throttling up it will flash and then as soon as you throttle off it will go into that mode it sounds pretty good as well this bike sounds quite nice I think I might pull over at some point and let you listen to the exhaust Not too shabby. <laughs> She's good. Totally unexpected to handle him. And she has got enough poke to get past slightly slower traffic. She's got enough poke that when you throttle up in sport mode, sure drop down a couple of gears and then go it's all round well thought out this bike so this bike will make a good relaxing getaway bike stick a load of stuff on the back get a back box I mean for a weekend I could get away for a weekend without actually adding any luggage to this bike whatsoever just using the hole under the seat and strap some stuff to the back it's got the grab rail so you've got the hooks to put your bungees on so you can strap your stuff to the back so you don't even need a back box I would put one on just for that extra luggage and you could go on a big tour with this let's say weekend mode no luggage but put luggage on and you could have a pretty big tour on this no questions she's nice through those sweeping bends it really does handle nice with the sweeping bends it is so smooth and so planted wonderful do you know what I'm, I'm changing my mind on this it's a weird thing and i'm going to stick my neck out here for a lot of hate but i would say this is kind of like a mini gold wing now if you watch my gold wing videos the bag out and the standard one that i did last year or a few years ago you will know how much i was shocked by that bike and i fell in love with it i absolutely fell in love with the gold wing because I wasn't expecting it to light my fire. That's what this is doing. This is lighting my fire in a weird way. Not in a spine tingling, electric pace, crazy way, but just in how good it is at doing what it's supposed to do and then surpassing it and taking it up to another level. If I think of this as a scooter, I'm absolutely blown away. This is phenomenal for a scooter absolutely crazy it's got so many tricks up its sleeve it's outrageous i don't know how many miles you can do with a tank but knowing the nc 750 engine it's very frugal i mean we are averaging at the moment 62.8 miles per gallon so this on a tour would be lovely it's comfortable it's got good weather protection it's got storage it handles I'm enjoying myself people right so while we're in this little bit of traffic let's go through the negatives and yes there are some I love this bike but there are some number one is the screen It's not adjustable on this level of bike uh, around the 10,000 pound mark that should be adjustable even manually it's not it's not electric it's not manual as far as I can see so that's a, a bit of a downer other thing is the mirrors if you want to adjust them on the fly i know you're not supposed to leave the comment section alone but you can't just reach out and touch them and just make those little adjustments that you do when you're on the fly and the other one and this is the biggest one for me on a bike like this because i'm putting it in that mini gold wing category is it's got no cruise control this bike could do with cruise control it's got throttle by wire so it's an easy fix but put cruise control on this put an adjustable screen on it 
and uh, maybe electric mirrors maybe I'm being a bit pushy here and yeah you've got a full-on tourer small one but a full-on tourer let's go there you go plenty of poke for the country lane overtake So I think that covers about everything. The three things I would change on it, electric screen, adjustable, cruise control, and I would probably give it another sport mode, just to make it even more peppy. This isn't too bad, but just to bring it on another level. I don't know if they can with this engine, but just to bring it up there to give you a little bit more thrill factor. But that's the only three things I would change. I could live without the power increase, to be honest. But the other two, if they put that on there, I would say Nyon, this bike is perfect for what it's supposed to do. So on that note, I think you know where I'm going with would I have one of these in my garage. 100% I would have this in my garage. I've absolutely loved riding this. Like the Goldwing I did a few years ago, it shocked me. And I love it for that. I like when I get on a bike and it's better than I think it's going to be. It's so disappointing when you set your level here and then the bike's down here. With here, I kind of set my level middle and it's up here. I'm very, very impressed. Cannot wait to ride the XADV. That will be coming shortly and I'm looking forward to that one. But on this one, yeah, I'd have one in my garage. Once again, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Coolston for giving me the jump on this bike. I shall leave the website address downstairs. I shall also put down there Honda's full specifications for this bike as well, just in case you're interested. I must say thank you to Ian, the general manager, and also thank you to Rob, the finance manager. I do appreciate you guys, you know I do. If I could hug you, I would. I'm just gonna have to man hug you from a distance. Here we go, sun shining, country roads. We're out again, it's spring. Summer's coming, lockdown, fingers crossed, will be ending shortly. Life is good, people. Life is getting back to being good. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, to do all those things that you need to do. Also, hit that notification bell so you guys can get the drop on these videos. If you feel like leaving a comment, leave that downstairs. Much appreciated. Oh, it's good to be out. You know I love you all. Stay safe. Fish out. Get all your back. Get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong But you did me wrong So go ahead, get, get gone. gone Get all your bags Get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong But you did me wrong So go ahead and get gone